In this video, I'm going to tell you about some stress-free ways that you can practice your miniature painting and maybe even make a little bit of money on the side. It is a little difficult sometimes to get started with your painting journey. Let's say that word for fun. Why not? Uh, and what I mean by this is that uh, I hear from people all the time saying things like, you know, I want to get into tabletop wargaming, but I'm, I'm, I'm scared I'm going to screw it up, you know? And, and, and the fear doesn't come from just like, I'm going to fail. I'm going to try to paint the first time and my first time's not going to be good enough. It's, for some people, that's what it is. But generally, and I've talked about this, I don't know how many different times, obviously you're not good at it when you first started because you've never done it before. I am a terrible pianist with the piano because I've never done it. So I would be terrible the first time. Obviously, that's not a good time to go book, you know, a big venue and play when I'm just now learning. That doesn't make any sense, right? Well, you know, the issue really stems from the fact that these miniatures aren't cheap. They are, as it turns out, in some situations, quite expensive. You know, some companies are cheaper than others. Some miniatures are cheaper than others. Um, that new really big giant, he, he's like nearly $200. So I can understand not wanting that to be the first thing that you sit down and work on because you're concerned you're going to screw it up. It is almost completely impossible, however, to actually screw it up. You may paint it terribly, but you can strip the paint off and then start again later on when you're a little bit better or something like that. All of that being said, and I've talked about practicing on, you know, uh, old models that you find online, uh, on eBay, uh, plastic army men, backs of plastic spoons. There's all kinds of different little things you can do to practice your technique before you start working on your, frankly, in some situations, quite expensive models that you want to look really nice. But there's another way that I've been thinking about lately that I think not enough people do. Um, and I think it makes a lot of sense. I am not a board gamer, basically. And by board gamer, I don't mean a gamer who is bored. I mean, I don't play board games particularly. I predominantly stick to these tabletop war games. I don't really do RPGs that much. I don't really play collectible card games. And I don't really play board games that much. But I pay attention to the board game market to some degree, uh, kind of from a distance. And uh, there's a lot of miniatures in board games now. Many, many different companies are coming out with specifically Cool Mini or Not, or Simon, or Come On, or whatever they want to be called this week. Those, many of those Kickstarters they've been cranking out come with, in some situations, hundreds of models. But it's not just them. There's plenty of companies out there who are making board games that have a lot of miniatures in it. And it's been going on for quite some time. Look all the way back to like Zombicide when that came out initially via a Kickstarter. And, you know, we've talked here on this channel about how to very quickly paint your Zombicide, um, you know, miniatures. Pachow there for uh, our friend Sam Lenz. But in many situations, you know, those miniatures go unpainted because the people who buy them are board gamers who are not necessarily interested in painting. And sometimes they do get interested in painting, but very frequently they don't. There can be a lot of reasons for this. They may not be into it because they don't have the time, they don't have the interest, they don't have the, the stuff, meaning the paints and the brushes and the wet palette and all that jazz, and they don't want to go down that road. I have been doing a lot of streaming on Twitch this year, working with the folks from Board Game Geek, and uh, doing streaming for many different you know, virtual online conventions that we kind of have to have because of the COVID. Uh, but in every situation when I've been doing that, I've been aiming my streams towards you are a miniature painter interested person, but you are really a board gamer. So you are, you know, curious about miniature painting and I'm going to show you how it's not as big of a deal as you might think. It's easy to do. I did these, um, most recently I did these, uh, couple of models. You got the Iron Man there and you got the Mr. Hulk from Marvel United, I believe is the name of that particular board game. I keep saying Marvel Champions, but I think that's a card game. Anyway, I'm pretty sure it's Marvel United, and I did a stream about those. It was a very simple paint job, primed in both black, dry brushed one silver, dry brushed the other one kind of green, then threw some co uh, contrast colors over the silver, threw some more green over the green, and just touched some stuff up, and it was pretty quick and simple. There's a lot of board games out there that have a lot of miniatures, and that can be really good for you if you're looking for practice. I'm not telling you to uh, go out and buy a bunch of board games just so you've got something to practice on, but I will be very surprised if you don't have at least some friends or family who are also interested in your niche hobby 
um, which is to say tabletop gaming, not just miniature gaming. But you've probably got some friends who've got some board games, and they would probably like it if you would paint them for them. You'd paint these models in their board games for them. And the benefit to doing that is this. Nearly anything is better than gray plastic. So if you go in there and you say, look, I will paint these models for you. But understand that I'm just beginning, I'm just starting out, so they're not going to be you know, super high-end magazine versions of them. They're going to be maybe a little bit weird. I've been, I've been watching a lot of YouTube channels. I've been watching Uncle Adam and a bunch of other different people, and I'm trying to figure out how to do it. So I'll paint your stuff for you, and then, you know, that'll, and then I'll get practice, and you'll get painted models. Very few board gamers are going to be like, nah, no, I'd, I'd rather just have gray or maybe you know a colored plastic blue green red that's fine i don't really want most people will take you up on that on that possible thing and after you've done a couple of those you've gone through and you've learned some things and this isn't even necessarily for people who are beginners you might be somebody who's been painting for a while and you want to get better at edge highlighting you want to get better at wet blending but you don't want to do it on your space marine such and such squad or your you know Russians for a uh, you know a bolt action. You want it because those guys are kind of expensive. You want to practice on something else. So why not make some friends? And you already have these friends, I'm hoping. But let's say make them happier by actually painting some of their stuff and sneaking a bunch of practice into that whole technique. Now here's where the money comes into play. If you are just beginning, you are just starting out. These are literally some of the first miniatures you've ever painted. I would tell you to say, look, I'll paint these for free because you are looking for models that you didn't buy to paint as practice and these would be those models and it would make a lot of sense but once you've been doing it for a little while you could also then start to say look i'll paint your models for beer or maybe 20 bucks or something like that you're still getting the practice but you are coming out a little ahead if you look at how much time it takes you to paint those models and then you take that amount of hours and divide it by beer you're going to like be like, but I could just buy beer. That would be easier. And it would. Don't get me wrong. Same with like, you know, here's $20, but you spent 10 hours on it. You made two bucks an hour. I think that's right. I'm not a mathematician. But on the other hand, you also got practice, which kind of came for free. So it was kind of like you got a tip. You painted them for free. You got a bunch of practice. You learned, because I've talked about in the past, you do the majority of your learning by actually putting a brush to a model. Not just by sitting here and watching YouTube videos. It's called the 1090 rule, and I think I made it up. I know I made a video about it. Pachow. So sitting down and actually getting some brussel, brussel, bristle onto uh, you know, the model is really super important. And if you also maybe get a pizza and a beer, or you get paid a little bit, that's even better. Now, I'm not telling you to quit your job and go into commission painting. Certainly not. But any time that you're looking for, I need a little bit more practice, I need a little bit uh, of experimentation. I need to be able to work on, well, what happens if I put these colors on top of that colors? What happens if I put contrast colors or glazes on top of metallics? Well, Iron Man's a good situation in try which to try that out. But maybe your, you know, 60 or $80 Redemptor Dreadnought is not necessarily the best place to try that out. So try it out on Iron Man for your friends. And then you can be like, cool, I learned some things from that. I'm more confident about it because that's really a huge portion of the paint is becoming confident in being able to do the technique and you do that on these models that frankly aren't super high detail in many situations sometimes they're made out of slightly bendier plastic sometimes they're not um, sometimes they have eh, detail sometimes they've got okay detail but they're not the high-end stuff that you get from like games workshop and weird games and uh, a lot of other companies out there who do good good work mantic um all kinds of different companies out there. So, and they also don't have that cost because you didn't buy that board game, your friend did, and now you're painting it for them for free or maybe a bit of money. It's a win-win. So start paying attention to what your friends are buying and kickstarting and things like that as far as board games are considered. If they're like, yeah, I just, you know, kickstarted this new Kumani or not uh, board game. I'm really looking forward to getting it or I just received it. Perk up your ears, because I will tell you that model that, that box has got 50 models in it if it's got a single one. It's just that's the way that they work these days in a lot of the board gaming out there. So if you can sit down and paint those models, get practice. Even if you're starting from nowhere, get practice. Explain to your friends, look, I want to practice on these models. They're not going to be the perfect thing. You know, go from there. 
or if you've been doing it for a while and you want to even practice more but not on your own stuff because you want to get better before you do it on your own stuff, this is a perfect way to do it. And maybe it becomes a side business down the road that you find yourself doing, um, you know, when you want a little bit of extra scratch maybe to buy more models. Uh, and, um, you know, you can head yourself down that direction and get better and better at painting while you're doing it. And, you know, make your friends happy. One, two, three, folks.